while there were separate facilities. Uh, it was total discrimination, really. It was just a, a second classness that, that I wouldn't want to behold would be on anyone because it was uh, it wasn't humane. It wasn't human. We African Americans could not eat at the lunch counters. We could not even sit on those green benches downtown. We were not treated equally as the white citizens in this city. In 1963, I was hired on the St. Petersburg Police Department. And when I went to work at the police station, I determined that the police department wasn't totally integrated. The locker rooms were most definitely segregated. They were put in the corner. Patrol cars that they did have were the old ones, but maybe not in very good shape. We African-American police officers were always assigned to work in the African-American neighborhood only. We could only investigate complaints from citizens of color. We could only arrest citizens of color. You know, you're trying to enforce the law, you're trying to uh, get respected or be respected, and you know, you're getting uh, disrespected by the people you're working for. In 1965, there were 15 African-American police officers on the St. Petersburg Police Department. That includes one sergeant, two detectives, and 12 uniform officers. They wanted uh, equal responsibilities. They wanted to be able to police white neighborhoods like Snell Isle, uh, like the Old Northeast. Uh, and they wanted to be able to uh, arrest a white person and, uh, and take them in without having to have an assist from a white officer. So we 12 uniform officers started having meetings among ourselves at different one of our homes to discuss the racial attitude that was against us as the police department. And at one point, finally, I think it might have been Fred Crawford who said, the heck with it, let's sue them. If they fire us, they fire us. And that's actually where that nickname came from, you know, the Courageous 12, because every one of those guys put their jobs on the line when they decided to sue the city. On March 31st and April 1st of 1966, we went to federal court in Tampa, and Judge Joseph Lee ruled against us and ruled in favor of the police department in the city. That meant that we had lost the lawsuit. So the NAACP agreed to file the appeal for us at no cost. On August 1st, 1968, the appeals court ruled in our favor, and we had won that lawsuit. When we won that lawsuit, we had different assignments. I was I'm the first African-American police officer assigned to work in an all-white neighborhood. It was 100% white. We were very proud and honored because we felt that we accomplished what our mission was set out to be. We were honored at City Hall City Council meeting on September 13th, 2007 and they gave us the key to the city and a proclamation, and we really thank the city for what they did for us. I never dreamed that I would see a black chief of police here in St. Petersburg. They have one African-American chief now, and they had one previously black chief before. And it's part of what we was put that lawsuit for. We want to make sure that when people enter our lobby now, they want, we want to recognize the doors that you walk through are the doors that these Courageous 12 open for minorities here in the St. Petersburg Police Department. Police Department in the city put a plaque in the police station with all our names and our pictures on it and a narrative let people know what we did to be honored. I have put in a place that every sergeant and lieutenant shall read the lawsuit and they will be tested on it to make sure they are aware of what happened so we make sure that never happens again. What we did help these young men that come on the force now, that came on the force after. I look around now, I see deputy chiefs, I see chiefs, 
I see majors. It, it sort of makes you feel good. That is the first four African-American police officers that I were hired on the St. Petersburg Police Department in 1949. That's the Courageous Twelve. When I see these twelve faces together as unity, who is closer, just like brother, brotherhood, that's what I think of. I'm the last one of the Courageous Twelve left. And I think about those 11 other officers that are going on, because we were brothers. We were just like brothers. We were so close. And I am going to carry the banner on for those other officers that are going on. But I tell the younger generation to stand up and for what you got and what you believe in and stand your ground and don't back down. And think about the Courageous trip as what we did. We stood our ground and we did not back down.